This video is a grab bag of the smaller improvements that we've added in Forest Pack 7 to make working with the plugin day to day just that little bit more pleasant. First up's a tweak that's been requested by V-Ray users for a while. Forest Pack now supports object ID render passes. To use it, all you need to do is assign an object ID to your source geometry and then add an object ID or a multi-map render element. For the first time now, V-Ray users can render usable passes from Forest Pack for post-production work. Now let's move to the interface. If you go to the general rollout and click on the gear icon, you'll find a new option called Open Single Rollout. When this is enabled, Forest Pack will only open one rollout at a time. If you open another rollout, any that are already open will be closed. This can make navigating the large interface just that bit more efficient. Moving on, we have a change to the way that Forest Pack distributes objects on the Z axis when using multiple closed spline areas. Take a look at Forest Pack 6 and below. When multiple splines were used, all the objects in all the areas would be aligned to the height of the topmost spline area. This meant that even if you had multiple flat areas to scatter on, you'd still need a surface to force them to the correct height. This all changes in Forest Pack 7. Now the Z position of the individual splines is respected, making it much easier to set up scatters on multiple levels where a surface area isn't really required. This works whether the splines are added as separate objects or if they're subsplines of a single editable spline object. I would add that this feature also works in the free forest pack light, making it much more useful for populating multiple areas on a site. VRA5 and Corona have some nifty new map types that allow you to randomize multi-maps and randomly offset and rotate UVs per instance. We're pleased to say that Forest Pack 7 has been improved to support these new map types. For example, here we're using Forest for a simple slab floor. By enabling the instance ID in a UVW randomizer node, we can create a much more varied look by randomly offsetting and rotating the maps. For even more variety, we can add a random tint using a V-Ray multi subtext mode. Of course, we could have done the latter as well with a forest color map. Another improvement can be found in the camera rollout, which has been reorganized and simplified. For a start, the camera parameter has been removed. In Forest Pack 7 and above, the camera data is collected automatically using the active view or render. This has resulted in a much more reliable experience. No more fiddling around selecting cameras, and it's a lot more dependable in batch rendering from multiple views. You'll also notice the camera features are disabled in the viewport by default. This is to improve responsiveness for large areas. If however you'd still like camera culling in the viewports, just check the enable on viewport option. Another improvement. Forest pack scatters are now much more stable on animated UV surfaces. Take this simple example. In Forest Pack 6, as the surface undulates, you can clearly see several items disappearing. Here's the same test in Forest Pack 7. As you can see, it's much, much more dependable, and some interesting other effects are possible, such as this uh, dancing hedge chap. There are a couple more small changes too. For example, V-Ray now uses the materials assigned to each custom object instead of the auto material. We hope you find these little changes handy. Give them a try for yourself. Forest Pack 7 is available now. You can find out more and download it from iTunes Software's website.